I know I'm going to see good things. I know I'm going to see things that are like, oh, this could be better. And I know I'm going to see absolute crap. I am in the world's best city for bikes. I must be, because the mayor of Paris and Hidalgo said in 2014 on her election campaign that Paris would be that by 2020. It's 2023. So I am living in Paris now, and I love that. Oh my God, it's so amazing. I come here so often. I used to live here in the 90s, and now I am back. And I'm gonna take a deep dive, man, into the state of the nation of the journey towards being the best bicycle city in the world by 2020. Big fan of the mayor of Paris, Hidalgo, come on. I'm just uh, giving her some shit for the claim that they're gonna be that good in that short a time. I've been riding around, I have been filming. There are some really amazing things happening here for bikes, man, but there still is a lot of weird stuff. Lack of cohesive design lack of connectivity between the types of infrastructure. They're not making any good choices about what kind of infrastructure they want. Some places are best practice, some are like, what the actual fuck is that? Seriously, I'm gonna do it properly, because you know what? I'm an actual urban designer. This is my job, designing infrastructure for bikes all over the damn planet for the past 15 years. So I am so looking forward to taking a deep dive and having the time to do so here in Paris, because I fucking love this city, man. I always have. Will I step on toes? Probably. I know I'm gonna see good things. I know I'm gonna see things that are like, oh, this could be better, and I know I'm gonna see absolute crap. But I'm gonna try and analyze it. I'm gonna try and show you what Paris could be if they really took it seriously and really wanted to become the best city in the world for bikes. Because you know what? They could be. Any city could be if they wanted to. But here in Paris, man, the strength is that they have a political will and they've had it for a very long time. You got people who really want this badly, but then what's going wrong? You know, what is the missing link here between their vision and their passion for making Paris better for bikes and better for people generally and, and, and what's happening on the ground, right? On the asphalt. So let's take a deep dive into Paris and the journey towards becoming the best city in the world for bikes. And let's hope at some point in the future, I get to stop doing the air quotes. This is a pretty new cycle track here in Paris. And if this is a sign of the times, in many ways, this is a good sign. Incredibly wide, unidirectional on this side of the street. They have colored the asphalt. It's very subtly aesthetic kind of sand color. The asphalt that they use here, check it for bikes, is really quality asphalt. It has a good grip on it. Compared to the asphalt I'm on here, it's very slippery, but over here, it's really a little bit more coarse, really good for gripping bicycle tires. So this is Great man, the stonework. The way they build curbs in Paris is beautiful, and this is a good investment. And this is really a sign that investment pays off. So, yeah, Michael's happy, but what's Michael gonna say now? You can ride with the buses in that bus lane over there, um, as you can see, people are doing, right? not protected infrastructure. There should have been a little more effort in you know, providing corresponding unidirectional on the other side of the street. This is also an important artery. This is where Rivoli sort of continues after the chaos of uh, Place de la Bastille up there. This goes to Place de la Nation. I really like this. And this is where Paris should be heading at every opportunity. And here come some bikes. <laughs> Farther up the street, there was an ambulance parked in the middle of the bike lane, so all the cyclists have to go out into the roadway. And in motorbikes, man. And so now they're trying to get back on to the cycle track, which is kind of funny. There's another lady. I don't. Know. <laughs> so there are some streets in Paris that make you feel a little bit better about the entire conversation we're having. This one right here. Not a busy street in the whole infrastructure network in Paris, but right here. It is great. 
Oh, and there's three cops on bikes right past it. That's kind of cool too, man. You see cops on bikes, you see cops on rollerblades, really local police all over the city. I digress. Unidirectional, on the right side, hard physical protection from the cars and the parking, all oh, unidirectional on the other side, heading this way. When they do it right in Paris, they use materials that are epic and beautiful and aesthetic and they look nice, which is important as well to the Parisians, perhaps, um, and maybe the rest of us. Really well done. On the right side, you can ride all the way up to Tour de Gaulle. On the left side, it is a bus lane farther up, which then morphs into this uni-directional. So that stretch right there, man, not the biggest fan in the world, but a much bigger fan than many other locations in Paris. This is Boulevard de Belleville. We are really kind of at a place where that's the 11th arrondissement, 20th, 19th. It's kind of this weird intersection. But a typology you see a lot in Paris. This time, kind of infrastructure, physically separated from the sidewalk and the cars. Pretty good best practice. Unidirectional, both sides of the street. I like that. This goes all the way to Place de la Nation. Uh, it varies in quality, but Paris has done some fixes where you don't really have a gutter anymore. You, uh, you basically have like smooth asphalt all the way along. You know, I don't know how far that goes, but like there are some simple details that they're really thinking about. So typical Parisian infrastructure, really, it's pretty good, you know? Could be wider, but not bad at all. So I was just on the other side of the street saying, ah, oh, this is not bad, you know, typical Parisian uh, typology. And then <laughs> I came across the street and, uh, you know, what, what's that, like 30 meters of bike lane and then it ends. I don't even know what happens farther down. So, ah, all right. <laughs> so here on... So this is Avenue de la République. Place de la République is right up there. You can probably see it in the distance. And this is a pretty new bike lane, end of 2022. Like we're talking not even like six months ago, maybe even less. This was put in and I like it. There's so many good things about it, man. Uh, it is physically separated with their beautiful, hard. Oh, the noise <laughs> when you're trying to make a film, man. Um, beautiful stonework. God, I say that all the time in Paris, but it is beautiful stonework. Nice curve. Really nice and wide as well. It is unidirectional, thank fuck for that. Uh, it's also a corresponding lane on the other side of the street, man. It's an important artery. I was riding down it yesterday. It continues all the way down. It's really cool, man. So that's nice, right? These little islands here, right? There's another one here, right there. Standard design here in Paris, this I-shaped thing, a little island for different things, a baller. That was put in. Jesus. That was put in just a few weeks after they opened this bike lane, okay? They made it just straight down, and then all of a sudden, these things appeared. We don't know why. And they thought, oh shit, we better fix that. So they put this in. This is not a standard for design for bicycle infrastructure in, in Paris. It's not in their big fancy design guide. It might be added at some point, but it's just like kind of a freestyle solution, you know? And Paris, everything has this aesthetics. Everything is in the documents. Everything has a name. And then somebody just went, I don't know, you want to do that? Okay, let's do that, great. This is a real pain if you're on a cargo bike, you got to kind of do a shunt. If you don't see it coming, if it's in the, at night, you know, like it's kind of a tricky one. It's super wide, but still, it's it's just this weird little uh, Band-Aid solution and nobody knows why they put it in and they only put it in here. They're trying to move towards their aesthetic ballers, the black ballers with reflective tape. And uh, I don't know why they didn't put that here. This is a big fancy street for Paris, man. They, but they got this, this temporary white one. I don't know. Motorbikes, fuck my life. All right, so over there, on the other side of the street, waiting space for bikes. If you need to cross the street, that's cool. And uh, there's also some over... Oh no, it was, it was there where the yellow van was parked. Um, but there's a waiting space, so you can cross the street either way. Waiting space here. They also made it so that a car can wait in case there's bikes coming or pedestrians, you know. That's not a bad solution, but yeah. In the big picture, I don't know. You know, is it standard in Paris? No. So, what? Well, I don't know what they're doing. I noticed another thing, kind of not really related, but hey. My YouTube channel, right? So 
On the other side of the street, there are electric charging stations for electric cars. We don't need different cars, we need fewer cars, but what I like here is that they are taking away space on the street. They're putting charging stations on the car infrastructure. So many cities around the world quickly putting in some uh, charging stations, they're taking sidewalk space to do it, man. Stop doing that. You know, it's a different vehicle, it's a different, you know, use that space for them. I rode it yesterday, like I said, and uh, it was pretty cool. It was a comfortable lane. There's some weird stuff going on, which is a sign that Paris is still trying to go, oh, what do we do, what do we do? I don't know, you wanna do that? Slapping some Band-Aids on stuff. But generally, this is a, a pretty good solution. This should be the baseline for everything they're doing from now on uh, in Paris and fixing all the crap that they're doing. They should do this everywhere immediately. Thank you. This is another major artery in Paris. This is along the left bank. This bi-directional runs basically the entire length of Paris. And if you look at it, this is a sign that this is not bad at all. It is a very wide bi-directional. Weirdly, no markings down the middle, which I think they should have. I think you should always have that. There are studies that show that that helps safety. Um, a good physical separation, you know, from the cars. But Paris still has three lanes of cars here, man, plus parking on the other side. It begs the question that, you know what? Why not make this a unidirectional and put a unidirectional in on the other side to let cyclists have access to all of the intersections, all the streets they gotta go up and down, man. It's a no-brainer, you know, to redemocratize a little bit more space. So it's kind of like, yeah, it's pretty good, a lot of effort was put into this, some space was really taken back and given over to the bike. Um, but there are some details with a stretch like this that really need to be addressed. So, yay-ish, you know? This is the other side of the island, you know, the police here, the regional police and all, all the fancy stuff here. They actually have influence on the island. These are important streets for Paris, but they can decide what happens because they kind of like, you know, own it. And so therefore they have a lot of influence in subjects that they don't know anything about. Never a good thing. But here you can see, this is also a Corona piece, the temporary bike lane that was put in over the this bridge here during the pandemic. And it will be made permanent. One little detail about the aesthetics. Bollards are usually ugly. They're green or they're yellow or they're orange with the reflective, you know, the reflective uh, tape on it. Here in Paris, they did a study showing that we can actually have these kind of bollards. They're plastic bollards, but they're black with reflective tape. It was simply more aesthetic. I like that about Paris and the French. Aesthetics are important. Sometimes they get out of hand in this city, but here, I think that's a cool little unique Parisian angle. Noisy. Cars on cobblestones. Not something you should have in cities anymore, man. I don't know why, but I seem to talk a lot about cobblestones. I've talked about what we do in Copenhagen. Um, to keep our cobblestones, our historical heritage. And then I've talked about it in Lviv, in Ukraine. I don't know what it is. I've also mentioned it here in Paris before on social media back in the day. But cobblestones, they're everywhere. There's an organization, probably one of the most French organizations you can imagine, Les Architectes des Batements de France, the architects of the buildings of France, right? And these people have an enormous influence on this historical heritage of Paris and retaining it. Um, and they are like the cobblestone freaks of the world, man. They love it. Every time somebody says, ah, well, bikes and cobblestones, you could do better. No, we won't do that. Very few streets of the world are as famous, as renowned, as iconic as the Champs-Elysees. Nobody I know in Paris goes to the Champs-Elysees. It's literally hated by all the Parisians I know. So yeah, not an attractive place. You can also hear why. Insane amount of traffic, always been like this. Uh, huge military style boulevard built back in the day for pomp and circumstance, but uh, now it's just a nightmare. Bike lanes, they uh, have been there for a while and they have upgraded them a couple of times. So there's a stone curb off to the left, unidirectional, best practice. Yay, I like that, but um, cobblestones. Man, it was a few years ago, I was like on Twitter saying, what's up with the cobblestones? It's a bike lane. And once again, we have to do the battle with Les Architectes des Bâtiments 
de France, right? Little committee who decides all of these aesthetic historical things. Champs Elysees, cobblestones. Can't do anything about that at all, man. Uh, funnily, I just saw the 1980s bike lane put in by Jacques Chirac, and there's still asphalt on that old lane, so it is technically possible. Yeah, so I don't really exactly know what's going on. So I was a bit grumpy on Twitter about that. So I posted a video and some photos of what we do in Copenhagen. But we also have a historical heritage thing with our cobblestone streets in the heart of the medieval city center. They just replaced the cobblestones on this section here with smooth cobblestones. It's a standard in those kind of streets in Copenhagen. They've tried to fill in the cobblestones here. Fucking SUV, man. Uh, they tried to fill in the cobblestones with sand or something to try to make a little bit smoother, but I just rode all the way up from Plastic on God and it still sucks, man. Blah, blah, blah. You know, you're still rattling your feet the whole way up. Lots of room for improvement on the bike lanes. Lots of room for improvement for the whole Champs-Élysées. It's time to modernize and realize that bikes are back and there are ways to plan for them and just do it in Paris today. All these groups with this enormous influence, you know, the regional police on that island, this fancy architect organization, you know, sticking their fingers in, man. There's gotta be a cohesive way to build a bicycle city in Paris. This is a bureaucratic country, one of the most on the planet, believe me. It's gotta be simpler, it's gotta be easier because we know how to do it. 100 years of best practice is just waiting there, ready to be implemented on the streets of Paris. One of the things that Paris does really, really well is bus stops. This is like the Copenhagen standard as well. Wherever there's space for a bus island that passengers can, you know, get onto and then cross over to the sidewalk, this is one of the safest solutions. They do that well. There's a weird little bump. Weird if you're riding a bike, but it's, of course, makes complete sense for people coming off the bus with strollers, the elderly, whatever. Um, Quality is excellent. Design is excellent. That is a really cool thing that Paris does incredibly well. More of that. There are many successful bike share systems all over the planet, but Paris really has one of the best ever since it started about 15 years ago. You can't talk about cycling in Paris without talking about their Vilib system. They have about 20,000 bikes. It covers about 475 square kilometers. It's a massive area. It has expanded over the past few years to outside the city proper, into the many of the, the cities around Paris. The most recent data from Velib was from the 29th of January, 2023. That's just a few weeks ago. It was my birthday, so that's really nice they chose that date. On that day, in January, where it's a bit chilly in Paris, there were 83,000 226 trips made on Vilib. That is low compared to the average throughout 2022, but that is really great for late January. Over 269,000 kilometers cycled by the people of Paris on these bikes that day. They also have a lot of data. They're really great at providing data on their website. Um, other cities do the same thing, but then there's some that kind of don't really tell you how well used it is. But in Paris, they're good at their statistics. So in 2022, during rush hour in Paris, there are five bikes taken out of a rack every five seconds. And in 2022, over 44 million kilometers were cycled on these bikes. There are 760,000 users of the Vilib system. That's 100,000 more than live in Copenhagen. And of the 760,000 users, there are 390,000 who have a long-term subscription. They have bought into the system and they plan on using it regularly. I've been using the Lib in Paris since the beginning. I was here about 15 years ago on my ex-wife's 40th birthday romantic long weekend in Paris and I said, yeah, honey, um, I have to do a thing. I have to try these bikes here, you know, work and all that. She went, oh my God, um, you know, just do it for one hour and then the rest of the weekend is all about me. Fair enough. But then we tried it and she said, oh my God, Paris has just opened up. We both know Paris very, very well. Paris just opened up for us. She didn't expect that she would drop it. We realized that we had access to places at times of day where it would be impossible for us to get to. And she was not convinced at all that she wanted to ride a bike in Paris until we arrived on that nice spring day in May 15 years ago. And she realized, look at all these people riding bikes. That was back then, let alone now. 
She said, all these young women in skirts and heels, like me, you know, I can do that as well. I'm a Copenhagener for God's sakes. I remember it so clearly. And we just used these Velibs every single day. You know, after the metro was closed, in the middle of the night, seeing the Eiffel Tower at night, just getting around. It was absolutely a game changer. Also for me to realize the value of a bike share system, because that was early days back then, 15 years ago. So it is a game changer in every city that they show up in, every city that does it well and has the kind of density of bike racks for their bike share system like Paris does. Here they have 1,447 Vilib stations, 400 meters, which isn't very long, from station to station. You have an app, you can find out where you can get parking. In this neighborhood, Le Marais, on a Friday, Saturday night, it's really hard to find Vilib parking because everybody's taking a Vilib here and going out to eat and drink. But it is a success, absolutely. And one of the things I love the most about Vilib, which you don't really see in many other places in the world, is that the second most popular form of bike share after Vilib is two people riding on a Vilib. This is, yeah, never gets old, never gets old. <laughs> it's almost possible on most of these bikes to stand up and you see so many, mostly young people, standing up on the back, holding their friend on the shoulder and bombing down the street. You see it all day long. It's so cool. In Barcelona, the system they have there, you see people sitting on them in a different way. They sort of sit on the on the crossbar here, on the on the one they have there. But it's just really super Parisian to see how many people double on a Velib. And I don't think Velib is very fond of this at all. I don't think they like it. And I'm sure they hate it every time I post photos of it on Instagram or Twitter, but I don't care. I like it. It is bikes being used by friends, by Parisians and I would even adapt the bikes so that they actually have like, you know, like on a BMX, the little things that stick out and you can stand on. Like, let's legitimize the, this behavior, right? That's not gonna happen, but that's my idea. There you go, love it. Here's your pro tip right at the end. If you're looking for a Verlib, you know, I see lots of people walk around checking the brakes, checking the gears, checking the tires, making sure they're getting a good one, but there's a number on all of the libs and you want a high number, the highest number you can get in this rack. So there are some that are like 7,000, yeah, there's one over there that's 4,161. That's an early one, so you don't want that. You're, uh, you're better off getting one that is, has a high number like 50,000, 60,000. That's your pro tip if you're going to use a Velib in Paris, which you should absolutely if you come to this city, man. It is the best way to get around this city, to get to the Eiffel Tower, to go up to Montmartre, do all the things you want to do as a tourist in this city, or just to get to that meeting that you have here in the city, man. Velib, still one of my favorite bike share systems in the world. Many other good ones out there, but I got a little romantic affection for this one. So then there's just lots of little details that I love. Right here. Look at that. That's a bike pump. Actually don't know if it works because it's Paris, but it's there. There's a sign telling you that there's air available if you need to pump your tires right on one of the main boulevards for cycling in the city. That's really cool. There's another thing about cycling in Paris and in France that the rest of us can learn from. And you gotta wait for bikes. Come on. This little nondescript sign, you see them in various locations around Paris. If you're not from here and you're riding a bike, you might not have any idea what they're for, but those are the coolest little triangular signs you're ever gonna see in a bicycle city. So basically, they changed the law in France. Bikes are allowed to turn right at red lights. I know in North America, like everybody can do that, which is stupid, which is why the rest of the world never bothered. But here, if you're on, at an intersection and you see a little sign like that with a little arrow, you can turn right, even though it's a red light. At T intersections as well, if you see that little triangle, boom, you shoot on through. You can go from north to south in Paris on a bike without even stopping because of this wonderful priority for cycling. Why is it right here? Okay, this is a pedestrian crossing, but there's no traffic lights, so it's telling you basically you can continue through. Of course, watch out for pedestrians. But man, I like this sign. I like this law. Cyclists should be able to turn right on red in every city in the world. Except for America where they already do it, right? But never mind that. Every city in Europe, Asia, Africa, everything like that. And then you see a sign like this up above it, and you're thinking, wow, the city of Paris, man. They're putting in some wayfinding, telling you what bike route you're on, where you're going. Yeah, no, that's actually local activists. A very strong movement here in Paris. Um, they made these signs themselves, and they put it up, you know? 
because the city isn't doing it. There are some signs that the city does put up regarding wayfinding. <laughs> They're often high up on a lamppost and at, on a bike. You're not even going to see it. You wouldn't even be able to read the lettering if you did see it. So, you know, nice to see some activists being allowed to use the physical structure, the inventory in a city to improve the conditions for cycling just a little bit. Every city has kind of remnants of their bicycle past because every city has a bicycle past. A new safety innovation, a trek for the exclusive use of cyclists, is open in the Western Avenue by Mr. Horbalicia. Well, I declare this cycling track open for the greater convenience and safety of cyclists. Though we feel that motorist users of the road will be equally appreciative of this new boon. Because every city has a bicycle pass. Every city in the world was bicycle friendly for decades until we all started to buy into the car-centric dream and allowed engineers to completely ruin our cities. And the politicians who enabled them, of course. But in Paris here, there was a bike lane. This is vintage infrastructure. This was put in by the mayor of Paris, Jacques Chirac, in the 1980s. It was a symbolic gesture from him. He was completely fine with uh, the kind of car-centric thinking that he had inherited and he continued to build upon that. But hey, the guy put in a bike lane in the 80s. Not many places in the world. Okay, let me think. Off the top of my head, I got Montreal in my head. A bike lane on Rue Rachel. That was a 1980s thing. Not very many places in the world were that far ahead of the curve. The Americans would love it because it's just paint, right? They think that paint will magically <laughs> repel all automobiles. But that's what I'm standing on. I don't like standing on bike lanes, but I'm standing on it, man. Look at this weird kind of, it's actually a nice color. It's not blue, it's not green. It's kind of like, you know, turquoisey. Feeble effort, <laughs> really, but uh, somebody did it. It's kind of cool. New York, the mayor back in the 90s, he put in bike lanes and they were used politically against him because nobody was using them because they didn't connect up in any network. So his opponents started really banging on about this waste of money on the bike lane. But, I want to tell them it's vintage, a vintage experience. But this whole square here, man, this is Concorde, Place de la Concorde. This is the, still one of the craziest places in Paris. You really feel like you're in the 1950s, like over there, the famous photographer, Robert Boineau, is gonna show up and start taking photos of the traffic and me barely surviving crossing the street, right? Look at all that arrogance of space for cars. It's insane in 2023 that this happens in a city like Paris. But the massive transformation is underway. There are plans to completely traffic calmness, make it a huge public space. It will be a major focal point for the Olympics in 2024, kind of the center of it. I really hope that there will be a permanent transformation of this space because this is a brain fart. This is leftover, hangover shit from the 1950s and, and even before that as well. So a lot of potential giving some real estate back to the people of Paris and getting rid of a lot of these cars, man. But I'm gonna get out of the bike lane now. Bye.